Hey guys, welcome to Polygosm. My name is Christina and today we're just going to relax and generate a 3D environment from an image using FSPY to help with the perspective. I've covered this technique in an older video, so if you'd be interested in watching me use this method, but on a sketch instead, feel free to check out that video. However, today we'll be using a real image instead of a sketch. Let's get started. I covered how to install the add-on, the FSPY software, etc. in the older video, so I'm going to skip that part for now and just jump straight into the camera that the FSPY add-on imports. I decided to use this image because it's more of a brutalist structure, so creating the shapes for this image will be a lot easier. Of course, you can choose a more intricate image and do this yourself. The techniques will still be the same. You might just need to create some more unique shapes to project the elements of the image onto. First, I'm going to just block out the bigger structures and choose the parts of the structures closest to the camera. Since the shapes are very brutalist, all I need is cubes and planes really, which I add in using Shift A. I primarily use E to extrude outwards and inwards, and also loop cuts to get the shapes to fit the structures as best as I can. You can see that although we've used FSPY, not everything in a photo will align perfectly, as there will always be imperfections in the world. That could be due to uneven grounds, wear and tear, or maybe because these are human-built structures, so not completely perfect and straight. But not to worry, when we project the photo's textures onto the structure, we'll be able to add the UV bounds to better match the photo. I find this type of work to be very relaxing and therapeutic, really. It's a very simple process, but the end result is pretty cool and gives us a lot of freedom to play around with. I plan on dimming the lights of the environment, adding in some other cool lights, maybe some atmosphere, and so on. Once I feel like I have some structures that match the camera view, I select those faces, press U, and choose Project from View. You just need to make sure your mouse is hovering over the camera view window before doing this. Nothing happens, and that's because we need to create a new material and add that same photograph as a texture and feed it into the material slot. If you select the principled BSDF and hit Ctrl T, just make sure that the Node Wrangler is installed in the add-ons panel. You'll get a little shortcut to easily add in images to the base color slot. That looks a lot better. I'll continue repeating this process, so I'll just let the video play out for a bit. Since we're not too fussed about perfect and clean geometry, I use the Extrude Region tool, but set it to Extrude Manifold. If you've ever used SketchUp, it's similar to the tools there. Oh, and just ignore the floor plane there. The texture projection didn't really work super well there, but it'll look a lot better later on. Again, I just extrude and try to match the image as best as I can. And with the camera view selected, I select everything and project from view again. And of course, add that same material that we created earlier. Sometimes when creating the shapes, you'll have other objects in the image that kind of blocks the shape you're working on, so the texture of that part gets projected onto the part you're working on. But we can easily solve that problem by using the knife tool to select where those problem areas are. And in the UV editing tab, we can just hit unwrap. 
can move those rectangles around to sort of just replace those surfaces with cleaner textures. Time to work on the wall next to us. I'll just let the video play out for a bit again. Some areas aren't always flat, like this little square indent from the lamp, so you can make the meshes feel a lot more three-dimensional if you extrude inwards to match the structures in the image. In this case, since the lights were cylindrical, I actually added in a little cylinder to project the textures onto. And again, if you see any ugly areas, you can just unwrap that area and move it around to better match the image. You can also, if you want, just move the vertices of an unwrapped area to avoid having those overlapping surfaces. Sometimes you'll get wobbly areas where the textures just look really janky and one way to fix that is to basically make the geometry more dense which we can easily do by adding more loop cuts and you'll see the texture straightening out right away. Or you can alternatively add a subdivision modifier and just set it to simple instead of Catmull Clark, however you pronounce that. Time to work on the mid part of the image. At this point you'll probably be like, why the heck is it all so stretched? Well, when using FSpy, it can't quite decipher the depth of the image and only uses the photograph's information, which, I mean, cameras already sort of distort reality in a sense, but this is really no biggie. In the end, we'll just squish the meshes together in one axis and it'll look a lot better, trust me. I did a little test midway just to make sure that everything looked alright, and it did. But we have to wait until all the meshes are completely done and projected onto before we do this. Alright, so once I started figuring out the background some more, I wanted to just do something about the ground. What I did was to add a loop cut so I could reproject the ground closest to the camera to make it look as good as I can. The midground or background floor won't really matter as much as we won't be seeing too much of it. Anyway, I re-unwrapped it and basically moved the vertices to cut out the bigger middle structure that's kind of in the middle of the ground. And of course extruded the little grill things downwards to make it feel more three-dimensional. You can see that there's a subdivision modifier on this ground as well, but I had to disable it due to some weird glitches in the geometry. Let's jump forward in time and I'll just let the video play out for a bit. Alright, it's all starting to take shape. As an extra touch, I also added some loop cuts for these metal bars at the top, and with Alt E, I extruded along the normals. And of course, as mentioned earlier, we now get to squish all of the meshes together in one axis. That looks so much better. And finally, I decided to add in some shrubberies and plants via the Sketchfab add-on. That just gave the environment a lot more life and matches the original image much better. 
Now that we're completely done with the environment, time to add in an HDRI. I've mentioned quite a few times how to do so in other videos, so I won't bother with that here. But I basically chose a purpley type panorama. I also added some atmosphere, which I specifically cover in these three videos. And also added in the sunlight and chose to block out some of the light with a cube for dramatic effect. Since the colors were looking a bit washed out, I chose to edit the color management panel under render properties for a more dramatic and contrasted look. And I also added in a red lamp since we already have a cool light fixture in the ceiling above, so we might as well take advantage. But yeah, there we go. Doesn't this look cool? And it all came from just one photograph. If you're thinking about attempting this for a project, I highly recommend you find a very high quality image or the texture projection might not work as well. With the power of lighting and atmosphere, you can really change the look of an environment in an instance. Anyway, happy April Fool's Day. I hope you guys enjoyed this little joke video. And no, we will not be producing ASMR videos moving forward. Anyway, have a lovely day, guys. Bye.